unleash the power of knowledge and connect with the heartbeat of the African diaspora. Download our African Diaspora News Channel app now on Google Play and Apple App Store. Stay informed with authentic and diverse perspectives, breaking news and cultural insights. Immerse yourself in a community that celebrates unity, resilience and progress. Experience the vibrancy of the diaspora at your fingertips. Don't miss out. Empower your perspective today. Search African Diaspora News Channel and join the conversation. Recently, Representative James Clyburn of South Carolina sat down with NPR's Michelle Martin and conducted an interview about the state of the Democratic Party and his legacy. And this is a part of the conversation. Now, she started out by asking him this. You are the first African-American to serve multiple terms as majority whip, which is a key leadership role. Now you're assistant leader of the Democratic Caucus. Why have you decided to step down as assistant leader now? Now. And he replies, well, twofold. I think that high time for a transition to younger leadership is here. And I want to be a part of helping that get done in a way that would ensure continuity and effectiveness. And secondly, I want to spend my time on the campaign for Joe Biden's reelection. So firstly, he says he wants somebody uh, younger to come in. Now, let's get this straight. He didn't say he was leaving the House of Representatives or Washington. He said he's just going to step down uh, from the leadership role. So who uh, does he have in mind? I, I would love to know because most of them, I think like he does, right? So I don't know. That remains to be seen. And then he also says, well, I want to spend more time helping Joe Biden campaign. For what? For to do what for, for black people specifically more of nothing because you helped him the first time in fact you helped him to the point of getting into the white house because joe biden wasn't going to the white house until james Clyburn told uh black voters in south carolina hey i've been giving y'all those fish fries haven't i did you like the seasoning well then y'all better return the favor right so he already helped him so he's going to help joe biden do more of nothing all right and so Toward the end of the interview, Michelle asked him this. I don't know if you're ready to talk legacy, but what would you say is your proudest achievement as a member of the Democratic leadership? And then he responds, I said to those same three daughters that when I take my place alongside my late wife, their mother, I want them to put on my tombstone that he did his damnedest to make America's greatest accessible and affordable for all. If you look at everything I've done, it has been looking for ways to make this government respond to the dreams and aspirations of everybody, irrespective of what zip code they may have been born in or currently live in. Like really, you done your damnedest to help everybody? Well, there's a lot of black people who say, nah, I ain't been feeling your damn sir, of you trying to help everybody. But I was curious. And so I look back on some of the things that he uh, said he's done and the things that he's done. Now, in 2014, he did an interview, and this is partially what he said about reparations. Was there a new need for legislative or fiscal remedy? I've always said that affirmative action was a form of reparations. I've always said that, and I believe that uh, the extent to which the courts have been getting rid of affirmative action was the same reason you had the court in 1872 taking away 40 acres and a mule. There are the forces that line up, get enough votes, and take away these things. It's like, okay, so he gets, he's saying affirmative action is reparations, but we know that affirmative action did not help black people. In fact, it helped white women the most. So how is that reparations? We didn't get anything specifically for that. And not all black Americans were seeking to go to a college or get a certain job or something like that. We want our 40 acres and a mule, not affirmative action. All right. Now, these are some of the accomplishments that he has said that he uh, has done, and this was in the, from an interview, uh, I think it was Time Magazine in 2022. Inside the gym, Clyburn tells the crowd, he's tired of hearing that Democrats haven't done anything. We need to talk more about our accomplishments, he says, uh, brandishing a flyer that lists some of the projects he's gotten funded, money for black colleges and community health facilities, hospital upgrades and veteran centers, rural uh, broadband, 
the $20 million Lake Marion uh, Regional Water Agency, which brought potable water to much of his district for the first time, Heritage Preservation Corridors and National Parks, affirmative action provisions for government hiring, his uh, 10 20 30 funding formula, which specifies that 10% of federal funding be uh, reserved for areas uh, where at least 20% of the population has been below the poverty line for 30 years or more. The formula now applies to 15 appropriation accounts, little provisions tucked into bigger bills that can have a, a major impact headway, not headlines, as he always likes to say. Now, with all that I read, did you hear anything about reparations for black Americans? Did you hear anything specifically for black people? Now, I know that, you know, poverty line and below all that, that uh, mostly talks about us. But he talked about getting good water as well, potable water, right? Drinking water. We should already have that. That shouldn't be a part of no reparations or nothing like that. You shouldn't get no pat on the back for making sure black people got water they can drink and use. That's a human right. So basically, in all that he listed, still nothing specifically for black people. So again, he's going to go out there at the age of 83 with 81-year-old Biden, and they're going to campaign around the country telling y'all why y'all should vote for them. But I will tell you one thing that James Clyburn has managed to do for nearly 30 years, and that is bring his world-famous fish fry to the constituents where they said you can get some corn, potatoes, you can also get some shrimp. With your fish. I don't know. I guess that's tangible. But who wants that? And I'm sure he's thinking. Well I've done something for you. Haven't I? Nah. We could buy our own fish. With our reparations. Mr. Clyborne. So instead of him stepping down from the leadership role. And I don't know what he's been leading. But whatever. Instead of him stepping down from now. Why don't he just go on and step down altogether. And let somebody like a Marcel Dixon. Get up in there. And do for black people, which is uh, what James Clyburn has failed to do for black people for the over 30 years that he has held that position in the House of Representatives. So y'all tell me what you think of that. And for more insightful commentary, please subscribe to this channel and my channel, The Demetri K Show, here on YouTube.